Hello, this is the Trade Site U.S. Stocks and Futures and Forex market preview for the week beginning, we'll call it Sunday the 19th of February 2023, ending Friday the 24th. Having said that, Monday is a holiday, the 20th is President's Day, so the stock market's not open. Forex will be dead, but we still post the levels, and then it's a short week, and uh, also we just had options expiration for February, so we'll have the first day of the new options cycle starting on Tuesday, so that may not be that exciting, but we'll see how it goes. It's been an interesting week. Uh, here's the uh, dollar index daily chart. Came back up a bit this week, but again, we're really in a very narrow range since back at the start of December. I haven't done much. Um, a lot of flat days. I would say like in 75 days, we've had like four big moves. So that's not really exciting for Forex. Uh, here's the pound dollar also sitting exactly where it was back around Thanksgiving time. And it is what it is. Here's the euro dollar, the inverse of the dollar index. Um, same deal. Not too exciting since uh, December 1st. Here's the pound dollar. Dead flat. One big day down in December, um, but other than that, it's been pretty boring. So I don't want to talk too much about Forex because it's not the most exciting thing right now. Uh, we will get back to it when it gets exciting. Here's the ES front month futures contract. This is the daily chart of the broad market and futures form. Um, again, this has also been, like, look at the last, I mean, since February 1st, basically, this has been just dead flat, um, horrible, and Frankly, it's still sitting where we were back in September, even though we had dipped down and come back. It's just, it's not that interesting. Uh, S&P Cash, five, S&P 500 Cash Index, very similar to the ES, obviously as it should be, but um, yeah, not much here. NASDAQ 100, also flat since the beginning of February. Uh, still in that range, not super exciting. It's a little bit higher than it was prior. It's a little bit stronger than the ES the S&P, but it's still nothing really. Um, the Russell 2000 here also formed. And I'm saying it's forming a double cup and handle maybe, but um, which is a positive. And the small cap stocks tend to take off at the beginning of the year. So this is good for that, um, but it's nothing major. Crude oil uh, sitting at $76.55. Very near the lows, nowhere near the highs, but uh, not at the lows. And gold um, back down from the rally that it saw um, recently. Bitcoin sitting at 24,540, whatever, 24,550, let's just call it that um, as I do this because Bitcoin trades uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So that's interesting. TLT, the 20-year bond ETF down, uh, bounced right off that static trend line, the red line there. Um, so it is what it is. Uh, the VIX, um, up a little bit again this thing uh, it did break the risk line from the 13 buy signal but it's still holding above the risk line now so we'll see what we get the advanced climb ratio on the nasdaq um, has gone into the 10 day moving average has gone in negative territory um, for the first time in a while a month but uh, it is what it is trend closes at 1.13 puts the 10 day moving average at 0.94 and again it only matters when we get under the blue line at point Eight five, so that's not a big deal. Here's the week. I mean, look how flat this week is. Like this is the five minute candles of the week, and if you you can see the last Friday on the far left side of the chart, so we gap up and move up, and then Tuesday gap down, fill and close even. Wednesday gap down and fill, close even. Thursday gap down and almost fill. We got a thirteen sell signal Thursday about two hours before the close. That was the high, and then boom, and then I mean literally closed you know, almost even for the whole week. Uh, NASDAQ 100 did close basically even for the whole week. I mean, this has just been, it was horrible. We had a great week. Don't get me wrong. We made a lot of money. Uh, there was a great futures call. There was some great stock calls, but it's just not that interesting. We can't make more calls when things are this flat. Um, let's just look at some of this stuff. So Apple, uh, you know, didn't close down a little bit on Friday. Amazon, everything's down a little bit. Meta, uh, again, down a little bit uh, and retreating from the gap up. Google, um, not much here at all. Everything was pretty flat on Friday, Goldman Sachs. So we're going to do these uh, previews once a week now um, and just see where we go from there. But uh, Google, uh, Goldman Sachs has been dead flat for quite a bit. Um, Netflix, uh, also dead flat. Tesla, NVIDIA. 
and Zoom also dead flat. So we have not uh, seen a lot of action in all of that. Uh, in terms of economic data coming out this week, or what is uh, the week ahead, again, it's a short week. Uh, it's the first day of a new option cycle. But, uh, yeah, it, nothing in the U.S. obviously on Monday because of the uh, holiday. Tuesday, there's just a ton of stuff around the world. Uh, not so much here, but there's just a ton of stuff around the world. So we've got Flash manufacturing PMI numbers and Flash services PMI numbers out of all the European countries, plus UK and Europe as it goes, uh, CPI and all the different numbers and retail sales out of Canada, Flash services PMI and Flash manufacturing PMI here in the U.S., at 9.45 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, existing home sales at 10, that's Eastern Time. Um, some New Zealand numbers, they got a rate announcement on New Zealand uh, going into Wednesday. Wednesday, there's nothing here in the U.S., nothing around the globe. It's really like one of the most boring possible days for economic data. Um, and then Thursday, you've got the uh, CPI number out of Europe. Uh, preliminary GDP and on the weekly initial and continuing jobless claims numbers. We got Natty Gas at 10:30, and then crude oil inventories at 11 because you got the holiday, so it's a, they got to bump that till Thursday instead of Wednesday on the Natty Gas side. And then Friday, new home sales pending, personal income and spending, revised University of Michigan sentiment. It's not an exciting week. There's just nothing out here uh, in terms of data. I don't know what to tell you. Um, so let's just focus on trading. I wouldn't expect Tuesday to be super interesting because it's the first day back from a long weekend and also the first day of a new option cycle. But hopefully Wednesday and Thursday are the bigger days of the week, and Friday, you never know. Charts as usual brought to you by Ninja Trader. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so, and we will help you out for a couple of weeks. Have a great trading week.